What's up, Goji fans? I'm back with another video, and today I'm gonna be reacting to Godzilla 2013 versus Kong Skull Island by by a YouTuber named Eric Carter, and it was just released, and makes sense since GBK is coming out in about a couple of days now, and I'll be making Godzilla Monday since yeah, from this Monday to next Monday and to and to last Monday. Three more Mondays, so every Monday uh, for the rest of March will be about Mega Godzilla. So after this video, get ready for that Mega Godzilla video that I've been telling you guys. So yeah, three, two, one, let's react to it. <laughs> exactly. Wait a minute. I just heard that uh over the rainbow from King of the Monsters. Oh no, I'm gonna turn it up a little. Now I find the stories to be very strange with these two movies. The yeah, is, over the I rainbow from the, the King of the Godzilla, Monsters. But at the same time, the pacing is also a part of the story, and Godzilla's pacing is so slow. Whereas in Kong, the story might not be as good, but the pacing is so much better. Another thing that is part of a story is... Yeah, I do agree with the pacing in Kong's Godzilla is better. I the darker, eerie, and apocalyptic tone of Godzilla over Kong's serious, yet also campy tone. But that being said, when it comes to the character segments of the story, I think the tone actually does them a disservice in Godzilla, as it really does suck all the life and emotion out of these scenes. Whereas in Kong, although the emotions aren't that strong either, the tone does enable them to feel more human, and their interactions come across more organically. Yeah, I can already so this is a really tough on. decision, but in the end... I can already tell he's gonna choose Kong Skull Island over Godzilla 2014. And I don't blame him, because I prefer Kong Skull Island over Godzilla 2014 as well. Yes, even though I'm a fan of, uh, even though I love Godzilla more than Kong, King Kong, uh, even though I love this, God, I, even though I know Godzilla movies are supposed to be more serious than King Kong's goofy movies, but the way they execute the the multiverse so far, I'm, I, I, I would prefer Kong Skull over Godzilla 2014. I think I would pick a movie that was telling a story with better pacing rather than a movie that had a good story but due to its severe lack of pacing ended up making a movie that has two hours feel like three. So the movie with the superior story is Kong Skull Island. And as for the characters in both movies, at first I hated the characters in Kong Skull Island as I thought the movie was being so tone deaf in the fact that it's giving you these characters that you are supposed to like. I heard that, they that do all Kong Skull Island's characters were hated. are just downright immoral and evil such as invading someone else's land and dropping bombs on it. And when they are called on it, this is their response. You're dropping bombs? Scientific instruments. Yeah, so long as we don't call them bombs and call them scientific instruments, that makes it okay. And the movie expects you to like these people. But upon re-watching it in preparation for this video, I am starting to wonder if they gave us these characters to provide social commentary on the American soldiers. We usually see the military from such a heroic standpoint in the news and social media and word of mouth, but when you leave the narrative and actually search for actual videos of their activities in the countries, however, you will see that they lack humanity and they disturbingly enjoy shooting innocent people and blowing stuff up. And when you take that into account, and then take a look at the military characters in this movie, and how they enjoy the carnage they are creating with big smiles on their face, it's clearly portraying them as the bad guys. And the first time I saw this movie, I just put it down to bad character development. But watching it again, I don't know. I feel like these character choices were not done by accident, and are actually part of the movie's attempt at social commentary. You're dropping bombs. Scientific instruments. You hear that, boys? We're scientists now. <laughs> I did not like that part. And I actually applaud them for that. And when I was watching it, I saw it as, they are killing the wildlife, and now the wildlife is fighting back and killing them. Tragic irony. I love it when that happens, because you're, you're invading their uh, property, and they have the right to get you back. I suppose, and I enjoyed every second of them getting mowed down in this movie, as they were really portrayed as despicable people. Yeah, I enjoy seeing Kong defeat some helicopters. That's what I always like about King Kong. Her performance in here is still far better than her stilted performance in Captain Marvel. Here, she at least seems invested and awake. Now, I didn't really think of this the first time I saw it, but two of the people that organized this expedition tried to recruit a tough guy to go on the island with them, and they hired Tom Hiddleston. And I don't buy him as a tough guy who lays down the rules Sorry. of a dangerous reality to his deluded employers. 
They needed someone who is physically bigger and also has a strong presence to them. There's a reason that actors like Schwarzenegger play characters in films like Predator, where they are called to carry out dangerous jobs, or Stallone in movies like Rambo, and Keanu Reeves in John Wick. But Tom Hiddleston is oh. not that kind of person. And he can fold those arms of his all he wants. He still doesn't come up as the tough guy. So I really think that he's miscast in this role, as I never bought him as the tough guy. Oh, There's times I, I think, think I like him. I like him. Character. I gotta say though, this movie wants the death of some characters to be super emotional, and I didn't feel. Yeah, like I did not like that death scene. That made no dramatic. sense. I never understood that death scene. Well, I have said this before. One of the weakest aspects of this movie is the characters. All of them have deadpan expressions on their face and just give military exposition throughout the whole film. And Aaron Taylor Johnson, a very talented actor who played Kickass for crying out loud, was also very subdued with his performance in this movie. I mean, I know he is in the military, so he's emotionally very hardened, but I don't care who you are. When you see huge, gigantic monsters right in front of you, then you should, at the very least, look scared. Exactly. I heard some people made that excuse of, oh, he's a soldier, he's not allowed to emote. Well, guess what? When your life is when your life is down the line, we see two, we see gigantic, gigantic, I can't even speak, I can't even speak, gigantic beast right in front of you. And your life could be down the line, especially if they're fighting in the city, since the, the buildings could just easily fall on you. Your life could be down the line. You could, you should be scared. And I don't want to hear your excuses. Oh, the Yo, Yo, 1954 did this the same thing. Oh, this movie is trying to follow off of the 1954 movie. Well, the 1954 movie at least had expressive characters. And Godzilla was at least in the movie as a villain instead of a Still just lying to us by the trailers. I like 2014. I like the movie that we got in the end, but I would still like to see that movie that they promised us from the trailers. Not bored. This is practically universally agreed upon, but the best character in this movie is Brian Cranston. I agree with you there. I, I think everyone in the Godzilla community would agree with you. He is the only actor that does not act stilted. He actually acts his ass off and emotes like a real person. Mm -hmm. And that makes him stand out from everyone else. But in and I heard another thing that I heard some people say that 2014 had better characters than uh, King of the Monsters. I don't believe that at all. King of the Monsters has at least, at least has emotional characters. And even if the characters in Godzilla for this kind of door emote, I can at least enjoy them because from what it looks like in the trailers, they seem like entertaining. They seem entertaining. Fortunately, when things finally get going, he dies, and then we're stuck with the military and his son. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with you there. Why would they kill off the only character that actually seemed to have balls here? Like, come on. And to his credit, his son did have a really good scene where he had to look after this kid who got separated from his parents. And I genuinely did like that bit of development with his character. Aside from that, though, the characters in both movies are incredibly weak. But if I had to choose, I'm then choosing I would Kong say that the movie with the superior characters is Kong Skull Island. Exactly. Because even though they aren't good, they are bearable. And I can just about get away with watching them. I actually the think they are good. Runtime. I think they're enjoyable. So the movie with the superior story and characters is Kong Skull Island. Oh, here's what I'm waiting for. <laughs> now, right off the bat, I'm just going to say, Kong gets far more screen time in his first movie than Godzilla does in his own. That is undeniable, and if we are talking about which movie exactly. gives the monster a much better use of screen time, Kong. Kong Skull Island is the immediate winner. There's no question about it. Right. What I really want to do is talk about these two monsters as actual characters, because both of these monsters are portrayed as good guys in these two films, and the mm -hmm. movies attempt to make Actually, three films, if you count King of the Monsters. Godzilla, Captain Ford sees him on the ground after being beaten by the Mutos, and I love how in this one scene, we see that Godzilla looks vulnerable. He looks like he has been beat, not just physically. Man, I love Godzilla so much. <laughs> one scene, this gave Godzilla so much character, and it actually made me feel sorry for him. Now, Kong is a character that you can give tons of emotion to. This was convenient. Yeah, Kong is a much more sympathetic character than Godzilla. So, yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. Really makes sense. Level. And in Kong Skull Island, Kong is still given a personality. And that really comes across in the authority that he has over the animals and their safety. But I didn't get the sympathetic or emotional aspect of Kong. They tried to give us a sentimental moment with Kong, but there's no build-up to it. And honestly, it just feels like it was forced just to tick off a checklist. But there was no real sense of emotion or genuine humanity in it. I mean, this one of many scenes in Peter Jackson's King Kong... I like that scene in the uh, 2005 movie. Even though I'm not, I did not really enjoy that film, I, I like that scene. And honestly... 
the emotional element was brought out far more in Godzilla in both of his movies than in this version of Kong. And when you take into account that King Kong is supposed to be far more emotive than any other monster, why it's exactly? Not a opportunity. He is more it emotional. It is also a massive shame. So the I didn't really feel for Godzilla besides that one scene in Godzilla 2013, but I felt a lot more of for Godzilla in King of the Monsters, so yeah. But hey, this video is not about King of the Monsters. This is about Kong Skull and Godzilla 2013. Movie with a superior monster is Godzilla. Oh, that's one thing I can praise the monsters for. It has loads of action scenes. I actually love them. I love how they make it colorful. Unlike some of the other cinematic universes where they just make it, where they try to make it look good, but it really is just wasted. Now the action in Godzilla 2014 is nowhere to be found. The only place you see it it's, is on someone's TV. Yeah, exactly, on the TV. Sense. That's when they're yeah, on. That was worth the IMAX ticket from. Exactly. Right, right. On IMAX, especially if you pay to see this in IMAX, you expect to see giant monsters fight. It, well, we are finally gonna get it. it we're finally gonna get it. it just cuts away to a TV like look and they're showing them fighting on TV but like why not just show them fighting on the actual screen like on where we act when we are actually watching the fight That's one thing that 2014 lacks is that they cut away every time Something real is about to happen And an hour and 40 minutes later in the final climactic battle Although even then, the action is constantly being interrupted by right, the by coming up, cutting to humans. So much of throughout the movie. That's one thing I never understand in Godzilla movies that, that when some when some real is about to go go down, they'll just cut away to the humans. Like, can you just let us watch the fight? Like, come on. That's one thing I never understand in Godzilla movies. They will cut away any time. Some real is about to happen, and even then, when we're watching the fight, they cut back to the humans. We go back to the fight, they cut to the humans. Like, can we just watch the fight, please? We pay, we give, we're giving you our money so that we can see these monsters. That, oh, I can't. I don't know if y'all can hear me, but <laughs> I sound a bit weak there. We we're giving you our money so that way we can see the monsters, what they can do that you created, and yet you're coming cutting back to the humans instead of the monsters that you created. I've said this before, you will have far more fun watching this fight scene on YouTube because it cuts out all of the boring military. Right, exactly. If you want to watch the fight, especially Godzilla 2013, you can watch it on YouTube, but it's like five minutes short because how long this how long this movie is. Stuff ...and focuses on the fight. In comparison, Kong Skull Island does have monster battles and it... It doesn't cut away, exactly. And also, it's set, it's set in the daytime battles, which is one thing I like. Which is one thing that both Godzilla movies lack. It, exactly, even King of the Monsters. Yes, I know some people, can, some people are going to be in my comments. Oh, what about that daytime? What about the underwater part? Yeah, but that was like for like 30 seconds. And then they dropped the oxygen destroyer. Whereas Kong Skull Island sits in the final battle. One thing I want, my only problem with God, Kong Skull Island's final battle is that... You know how the color grading is orange? I, I, I would at least like the, the the skies to be orange. So that way I can get that color vibe. That you're on a... Uh, I can get that vibe that you're on a myth, mythical, mythical island. Mystery. Island full of giant monsters. Unlike... Not some generic place that random people can just find monsters. I would like to feel that vibe, but that that's not where, what I really got. So, yeah. I still like the fight, though. Embraces them and fully showcases them, rather than constantly avoiding... <sighs> Man, I love the King of the Monsters soundtrack. It is the best soundtrack in the Monster Bridge. You cannot deny that. And the action scenes in Kong got fun. Some of them are super short, but overall, you get plenty of Kong monster battles placed right now. Uh-huh. And by the end of the movie, you get a final great monster fight with the biggest monster of them all. Now, when Godzilla does finally fight in the climax, it's a really cool fight. It's very dark, too dark, but it's still a very... <laughs> exactly. One thing I can't give, one thing that I liked about... One, another reason why I like King of the Monsters more than 2014 is that you can at least see what is going on. There are literal times in Godzilla 2014 we can't see what is going on to the point where we have to bring things up. Good fight, and I like the way it showcases the heavy weight of their movements, and the build-up to Godzilla's atomic breath was a thing. One, the, one of the amazing, one of the most 
greatest things in Godzilla history. That right there was the best part of the movie. As with the final attack that he did to the final monster, I do want. I like that shot. I really like that shot. <laughs> Godzilla laying out his atomic breath on the Muto. That shows that Godzilla is intelligent. Godzilla to try this tactic on Kong in Godzilla vs. Kong, only for Kong to slam Godzilla's jaw shut just in the nick of time. Exactly now, right. He's, he's, he's going to just punch him. Godzilla to cut him off by using an atomic breath. That would be an awesome way of incorporating their signature finishing. Move. I actually hope that, that happens. Side, although I did enjoy the final action scene in Godzilla, it is just too little too late, as this fight scene takes place an hour and 40 minutes into the movie. And to add insult to injury, in spite of our patience up till this point, the fight is constantly being interrupted in order to focus on the military that already had far too much screen time. It's like the movie is trolling us. It knows that we want to see the monster battle at this point, and it keeps cutting away. It almost feels like it's doing this on purpose. Add to that, the fight scene is quite dark, so it's hard to see what's going on at times. Whereas with Kong Skull Island, the action scenes happen in broad daylight and at... Everything this guy is saying, this man is saying right now is literal facts. It's what everyone has been saying for years. Like, like there should have been a point to where the film I just said, I think we've been cutting away too much. Why not just give him one fight scene? But no, instead, I think they really are doing this on purpose. All right, let's keep going. Midnight, and you can see everything. The fight choreography is clear, as are the monsters, and the fights are super cool and satisfying to watch. Although I would say that Godzilla had a much better finisher than Kong did. Kong's finishing move was great, yeah, exactly. but it ended a bit too I, I like Godzilla's uh, atomic breath final. I that it was just suddenly over. And it comes as no surprise that the director, Gareth Edwards, didn't show much Godzilla. Because a few years later, he made Star Wars Rogue One, and if you watch hmm. the behind the scenes material, we are told that Gareth Edwards was only going to use Darth Vader for just this one scene. It wasn't until a crew member told him, we have Darth Vader, I don't know, why don't we actually use him? Only then did they shoot the final hallway scene with Darth Vader during reshoots. My point is that Gareth Edwards has Darth frickin' Vader at his disposal, and left up to him, he was only going to use him for this one scene. And his mentality is very similar with the way he utilizes Godzilla. He, for some reason, is very reluctant to take full advantage of his high-status characters, and I honestly don't know why. Is it because he can't be bothered to stage a fight scene with them, so he tries to minimize them? Whatever the reason, it's why I do not look forward to watching any of his future movies, especially if he has high profile characters to work with, because we're most likely not going to see much of them. So for all those reasons, the movie with the superior action Kong. is Kong Skull. Exactly. Conclusion? Oh, let's see which one is better. Right off the bat, that I don't believe that either of these are great Godzilla or King Kong movies. Wait, but what? I think, I think I think both of them are good. I think both of them are good movies. What's your opinion? I respect you. I think both of them are good, are great movies. And King Kong Skull Island, I think is one, the second best King Kong movie since the original, uh, 1933 King Kong movie. Ugh, I can't even speak. I'm sorry, guys. I just can't speak. Red Godzilla 2014. Yeah, I do agree with you there. It's not one of the best Godzilla films. It's, a, it's an okay film. Bounds, but in Kong Skull Island's case, the movie is a perfectly harmless monster movie. It just pales in comparison to Peter Jackson's King Kong. But when compared to a monster movie like Godzilla, which you can hardly call a monster movie as it pretty much refuses to show the main freaking monster, Kong Skull <laughs> The way he was just... <laughs> the way he just got mad. Oh, oh, even though it's not a monster movie because they can't even show the main freaking monster, I feel his pain right there. And that's the that he really wanted him to... Uh, yeah, he really wanted to see more Godzilla. I don't blame him. Cause I think we all wanted to see him more as well. Island more or less speaks for itself in comparison. And even though I'm clearly not a fan of the movie, the thing that I absolutely loved about the 2014 Godzilla is the atmosphere. The Halo Jump scene? Yeah, I like that scene as well. I think everybody likes that scene. And cinematography. The movie is shot from a lot of human perspectives and human viewing angles, and this means that every time you see the monsters, there is a much more real sense to their scope. The sense of scale? Yeah, that's one thing I could give. That's one thing I could praise the monsters for. All three of the films. Yes, even though King of the Monsters barely even had them, but they still feel big, okay? But I have one thing I could praise the monsters for is that you can actually see how feel how big they are, unlike some of the other monster films where you barely or you practically can't tell if they're just playing with toys or not no of course they're not playing with toys but you can't really feel feel how big they are in other monster films that's one that i can praise the monsters for an appearance in the city 
it's time for the scores. These movies have both been out for a while now, so it's fair to assume that it all comes down to your own personal taste with how these monsters are presented and utilized. So with that said, Godzilla 2014 gets the same score I gave in my versus video with King of the Monsters, and if you mm. want me to go more in depth as to what I thought of the 2014 Godzilla, then I highly recommend that you watch that video to fully understand the rating I'm about to give it. It gets a 2 out of 10. Yeah, you and really Kong's hate it. Island gets a 5. Both movies aren't great monster movies in my opinion, but Kong Skull Island does showcase more of what you came here to see. The monster. If you sell me with a title such as Godzilla or Kong, then you must give me those characters. If you are not, then you better well give me some amazing human characters. And neither of these movies have amazing characters, but in Skull Island, we at least get what the movie was selling us in the title. We actually get Kong, and a lot of him. But I felt like it didn't give me enough Godzilla. And where the 2014 Godzilla movie failed for me, Godzilla King of the Monsters did not. Yeah, King of the Monsters is the to me, King of the Monsters is the best Monsterverse film. Godzilla King of the Monsters improved and then some. I was blown away by the far more prominent action, and it had some amazing monster battles. And both Godzilla and uh -huh. Skull Island do a great job when their respective monsters have to fight the humans, although again. Oh come on! It's not even a Kong versus Godzilla ad. Nobody cares. Again, oh I would say that Kong Skull Island did a better job as both sides deal a good amount of damage and there was a good story element leading to it. Whereas with Godzilla, it was mm. just kind of random. You could take the scene out of the movie and it wouldn't have made any difference to the film. So with Godzilla vs. Kong on its way any day now... Ooh -hoo! It come, if you want to know, it can't you don't know when it comes out. I'm assuming you know. But if you don't know, it comes out on March 31st. So yeah. Yeah. For in this epic showdown. I'm rooting for Godzilla. Team Godzilla for life. <laughs> I personally am rooting for Godzilla. Godzilla right, there you go. Both did a great job at making you feel sorry for this version of Godzilla. Yeah, I actually feel for... This is the most sip emotional Godzilla I've ever seen in my life. Yes, I know some people are going to bring up the 1995 Godzilla, Godzilla vs. Destroyer, but I still prefer this. I at least prefer this. And unfortunately... Kong Skull Island didn't make me feel anything really for Kong. I'm not. Oh, to be fair though, I, I did feel for Kong in Kong Skull Island as well. I did feel for Kong. They do, they do say that Kong is a much more super dead character than Godzilla. And for what, we, what, 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 we, what we've seen so far in the Godzilla vs. Kong trailers, Kong seems to be a mounting, so yeah. Which is odd because I thought it would be the other way around. I thought I would feel nothing for Godzilla, and Kong would be the one that I felt sympathy for, but no. So sound off in the comments below and let me know which of the two monsters you're rooting for. And stay tuned for my versus video of Godzilla vs Kong, and be sure to let me know which movie or movies you want me to compare to Godzilla vs Kong when it comes out. Thank you very much as always for watching, God. I'm, uh, I think you should compare it to, uh, to... I don't know, either Kong's Island or King of the Monsters, one of the two, one of the two, because they're the much more entertaining movies, unlike 2013, Kong's Island or King of the Monsters. That's why I want you to compare it to. Okay. Alright, take care. Eric Carter, alright, so yeah, we win my new... So yeah, when Godzilla vs. Kong comes out, I'm gonna watch, react to that versus video that he has planned. So yeah, stay tuned for my Mega Godzilla video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll talk to you Goji fans later. Goodbye.